And we are going to speak once again with our activism correspondent and friend Jocelyn McCurdy uh, Keats, who is uh, now serving as Washington correspondent for Act TV. Did I say that already? I think I did. And has also been traveling with the Bernie Sanders campaign. Bernie, of course, my old boss. So that is my conflict of interest statement right off the <laughs> bat. And Jocelyn, I understand you are sort of playing a dual role with the Bernie campaign. Is that right? That's, yeah, I, that's fair to say. I am still have my journalism hat on, so to speak. So I am, but I'm also supporting the campaign uh, with their live streams primarily on the announcement tour. It was a really exciting and inspiring thing to be a part of. So you guys are doing like tech stuff or media stuff too yes. along with, yes. And uh, so you've been, uh, how many cities have you visited with Bernie then in the oh, last goodness. month? I guess uh, six or seven. That's probably a conservative estimate. But so primarily, of course, the favorite primary states, Iowa, New Hampshire, and then all around California. It was a really, really lovely thing. So I went uh, on some of those uh, trips with, with Bernie early on, right, in 2016. And the energy was astonishing. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, I, what's it like this time around? I mean, of course, last time it was a complete surprise. So that added a huge piece of enthusiasm and energy because nobody had any sense that it was coming, you know, for 30,000 people in Portland or whatever, or Oakland. But um, what was the, what has the energy been this time around? Well, it's, it's funny you say that. I felt exactly the same way. I think as somebody who lives in D.C., and I'm primarily around other D.C. people who some of my friends are Bernie supporters, but some of my friends and colleagues are big supporters of Kamala Harris. So, again, in the political ecosystem, I think it's sometimes the, the groundswell energy that is there for Bernie is difficult to feel in a place like DC, but then you go out there and there are just thousands of people in um, New Hampshire. It was freezing cold and people were lined up hours beforehand this early in the primary season just to see him speak. And that's a really inspiring thing. So oh, I know it is. And I also always think in a situation like this that people are not, uh, you know, they look at polls or whatever and they say 18% want Bernie and 20% want Biden and 11% want Harris or whatever. But what they might be missing in the numbers is, is the level of, of enthusiasm among that 18%. If they're all going to show up to vote and only 60% of Biden's people are going to show up and 70% of Harris's people, that's, that's significant. And if they're all going to go out and knock on doors or half of them are going to go out and knock on doors, that's significant too. So let me ask you this. How many speeches did you see Bernie give, oh would you goodness. guess? I could probably give one at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. That's so a lot. I, yeah. But it's, it's great. And uh, one of the cool things to see was the way that each speech, he clearly is in touch with the seemingly niche issues that affect each local community. So uh, Twitter kind of exploded when he started talking about the ways farming practices are taking advantage of local laborers in places like Iowa. Because that's not something that's a really discussed issue in the, on the main stage. There are a certain number of sexier issues that I think all the candidates are touching on now. Right. And interestingly, a lot of those were introduced by Bernie last cycle. Medicare for all, most right. notably. But uh, you, you watch him speak, especially in these smaller cities, and it's just very clear that this is somebody who is incredibly motivated by the power that political authority can have to do good things in people's lives. And he's very much well-versed on those issues and wanting to bring them to places like Iowa and New Hampshire. And he was always, you know, I would say last time around, he, he had his standard speech and he always gave the standard yes. speech. But he always wanted to know what was going on in West Virginia or or... or Bakersfield, California, wherever he was going to be, he wanted to know the local issues and he mm -hmm. wanted to know what could be done. So that seems to me very much in character for Bernie. And uh, he definitely likes to drive the conversation. So does he talk about other politicians at all or does he just not no. bring them up? Yeah. And so this is something that I think really does need to be addressed, by the way. 
I'm not the type of person who thinks everybody needs to support my candidate. I think right. everyone, I, there are a lot of other candidates that I'm super passionate about. Elizabeth Warren, for example, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. trails Bernie pretty closely in favorability ratings. But there's a stereotype that Bernie is, you know, Bernie bros are critical of other candidates. But all he's been doing in these speeches is really uplifting the fact that we have a number of qualified candidates in this race. And the real battle is going to come in 2020 with defeating Donald Trump. You know, it, it's really interesting that you bring up this image of Bernie bros um, criticizing other candidates, because that's something that gets uh, a lot of people, David Sirota, who sort of has my old job, I guess now, but he got a lot of criticism for that. Other people have gotten a lot of criticism for that. The fact is, certainly in my role as an activist and journalist, if any candidate, for example, takes oil company money, Yes. I will criticize that candidate. So, yes, I have echoed in social media and talked about on the show that Beto O'Rourke, for example, takes oil company money. But it's not because I have a special favoritism towards Bernie. If Bernie took oil money, I'd criticize him for it, too. And, and if Elizabeth Warren took oil money, I'd criticize her for it, too. I, I'm where you are, by the way. I am not... Uh, I'm not committed to any one candidate now. I, 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 Bernie's the one I certainly am most in sync with uh, on the issues. Uh, I like it, but Elizabeth Warren is a close second. And, uh, but I feel philosophically, too, that uh, we need to get away from too many Democrats. It's kind of like, what team are you on? You know, I'm on the yes. Beto team. I'm on the Bernie yes. team. I'm on, I'm on the American people team, you know? <laughs> I'm on the good policy team. I'm on the best Medicare. I'm 100% on the Medicare for right. all team. You know, that's my team. You know, you want to join me? Come on in. So I, uh, that's my activism take on it. But. Well, and I love that you say that. This is something that you and I have discussed before. Celebrity driven politics, especially, is so toxic. This is not about personalities. This is about the realities of public policy and also who has the record and the ability to carry those policy promises out. And that's why I believe in Bernie, because he has this, and he is essentially the activist candidate right now. Right. I notice a lot of people on the internet, especially criticizing him as like having, oh, he's just, people just like him. It's like, yes, well, why do they like him? Right. They it's like not him. Because, it's not because he's like the, the most charming or yes. charismatic. I mean, he's a nice guy, but, uh, you know, there are people who are, you know, more fun to watch, have better senses of humor, uh, you name it. You know, the traditional uh, town, would you rather have a beer with, you know, that right. old test. You know, a lot of other people, I'd rather have a, well, I don't drink beer anymore, but I'd rather have a beer with Elizabeth Warren than with Bernie, but, uh, but Bernie, although I think he's a great human being, but uh, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. People like what he says on the issues. And by the way, I will say this in support of Bernie. He doesn't like celebrity politics no, either. No, no. Is he still saying, because I remember seeing him give speeches where people would say, we love you. And he would get sort of uncomfortable and say, thank you, that's very nice, but it's not about me. The cam yes, the campaign slogan is not me, right. us. There is no other candidate that is really doing that much to say, I realize that you're very excited about my campaign, I appreciate that. But this is not about me, Bernie Sanders. This is about the American people. This is about the issues that my candidacy represents. One of the, at the end of every speech, or towards the end of every speech, he'll say, you know, when we are in the White House, right. when the American people are in the White House. And regardless of what happens with this candidacy, that's what I want to see for my politicians. I want to see politicians saying, this isn't about, I'm just one individual, but what are the issues that we all need to overcome a very small minority of powerful people who are doing destructive things to our government, into our world, but have an almost endless amounts of money and power. And Bernie responds to that need and that frustration that people have. I don't know why people are so frightened of that. <laughs> you know, I don't either. And, 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 you know, from everything I've seen of him, it, it, it's sincere. Yes. He, it, it's not a gambit. It's not a play. I would put I would say that Bernie is the longest running example of something that's really on the, you cover activism. 
I think there is a new model of an activist candidate, a movement candidate. I think Bernie is one of them. I had a long talk on this program with Representative Pramila Jayapal about that. I think she's another one, comes from activism into the movement. Ellen Omar, I believe, is another one. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I believe, is another one. But I think what they all have in common is, is the not me us, right? Yes. And uh, which was a hashtag I was all for in 2016 mm -hmm. and, and, and I think really reflected his beliefs. But uh, I think that all of these I mean, Bernie, will, I'm sure he's still saying that he can't get done any, if he's elected, he won't be able to get done any of the policies he wants unless a million people show up outside the Capitol, step yes. saying we want this. And, and I believe he believes that. I believe Pramila Jayapal believes that and some of the other uh, great members of Congress as well. So, uh, all right. So you went to a, a whole bunch of cities with, <laughs> with Bernie. And yeah. I think uh, my old engineer and friend Will Urquhart was uh, with you guys he too. Was. And my travel buddy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, okay, so now you're back and what's next for you? So I'll likely be going out with Bernie again at some point, but uh, the first thing I covered when I got back were the the move move on has been doing a wonderful job of mobilizing rapid response rallies and protests at the White House around the Mueller investigation and release the full report. <laughs> it's which is every time I go to these protests, I think it's kind of a bizarre time in history to where you have activist energy coming out to support the FBI. But right, <laughs> I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, there is a sense of like, look, I think most people on the left are not great friends of a lot of the things intelligence agencies have done, but there should be a basic amount of accountability. With something like the presidency well, and and i want to see the report you know I, I mean my attitude on the Mueller report is that i don't think i mean he did some things as an fbi director i really disagreed with including promoting the narrative that iraq had weapons of mass destruction yes. I mean, i'm not happy about that i'm not happy he yes. also said that, you know he said other things that i found uh, uh troubling uh and i don't i don't idealize robert Mueller. And I don't take everything he says as holy writ, but I want to see the report. I mean, you know, I don't think there's any planet on which it's right that Bob Barr gets to decide whether we see it or not. You know, I, I want to see it. I want to see what it says. Um, and I'm still where I've always been on all of that, which is where the facts go, I'll lead, you know, because my movement is one that's built on facts. So Absolutely. And me too, right? One thing that uh, Congresswoman... Ocasio-Cortez says, look, it doesn't, we, we deserve to see it, one, but two, I think there was a weird thing happening with Robert Mueller where right. he kind of became this deity right. of the votive right. camera, if you remember that? Yeah, yes. I wish I had one. Me too now, yeah. or one of the t-shirts say, God save Robert Mueller, like I wish I had one, they're funny, but. I saw one once that was Johnny Thunders, the guitar player for the New York Dolls, but, so if it, Johnny, really? yeah, Did so if John, one? no, no, it was a friend of mine, so if, if they can make one for Johnny Thunders, they can make one for Mueller, I don't care, but anyway, what were you saying? Well, so, but it's like you said, this isn't some perfect uh, resistance style figurehead. He's just yeah. a, he's, he's an establishment government conservative who is clearly not a fan of Trump. But regardless, we can't fall into the mentality of making any one, one accountability mechanism our failsafe. We have to create a system where a Trump is not allowed to happen in the first place. And a lot of that comes to do with, you know, getting money out of politics right. and stopping all the small scales of corruption, which led to this point. So, but in the meantime, I also would like to see the report. <laughs> so, oh, no, of course. I mean, it's already proven quite interesting. So unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. But Jocelyn McCurdy Kurtz, the activism reporter and Washington correspondent for ACT TV and media, I guess, consultant for the Bernie Sanders campaign. I don't know how else to put it. As always, great to talk to you. Great to see you. And thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me.